major leap forward in our trade and economic relationship. The EU remains one of our most important trading allies, accounting for more than a fifth of Kenya's global exports. I must emphasize the impact of this agreement extends far beyond trade statistics. It opens a world of opportunities, facilitating not only the exchange of goods, but also ideas and innovations. It is a bridge between people and cultures and continents. These are difficult times, no doubt. We find ourselves amidst a formidable storm of challenges, each not only complex in its own way, but also deeply interconnected. Democracy is under pressure in many parts of the world and multilateral institutions, once the hope for international solidarity, are struggling to maintain broad-based acceptance, relevance, and effectiveness. At the same time, progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals is unraveling. Rising interest rates and looming debt distress make it much harder for countries to address their own socioeconomic challenges. High cost of living, fiscal strain, and migration are weakening international solidarity. And most existentially, the world, as a UN Secretary General reminded us recently, is literally on fire. The era of global boiling. It used to be global warming. Emphasizing the severe and escalating impact of climate change. The escalating severity of climate change is particularly acute and poignant in Africa, a continent that despite it, its minimal contribution to global emissions, finds itself at the forefront of environmental vulnerability. In Africa, with less buffers to address climate change challenges, we feel the impact more directly and more acutely. Consider, for example, the significant influence of high inflation rates on voting behaviors in your region. And I'm told you're going to elections shortly. Now imagine the impact of a year-on-year -year food price inflation exceeding 10% in sub-Saharan African countries where food makes up a third of household expenses. These challenges are not isolated. They are interconnected layers of a complex historical, economic, and environmental narrative that the continent endures. Africa still carries the scars of colonialism with, which remain visible in the economic and institutional dependencies that continue to hinder progress and perpetuate social and political fragility. Now, as we navigate a new era of global interdependence, this needs to evolve into a reciprocal relationship, a shift towards a more balanced and equitable global partnership with a deliberate transfer of technologies and intentional flow of capital to the global south. And to this also means a seat at the table to look for solutions that work for all of us in a spirit of cooperation and mutual understanding. <laughs> Thus, it is essential to reassess long-standing assumptions that sometimes are not true, rethink perceived barriers, and question default decisions. We need to be bold and strategic, and also take the, uh, the decisive step towards structural shift required to fulfill the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and keep global warming at 1.5 degrees centigrade. This was precisely the premise of the inaugural Africa Climate Summit that I hosted in Nairobi in September. The summit provided a platform not just to discuss the challenges we face, but to view them through the lens of solutions and opportunities. Therefore, I'm hopeful because there exists a real opportunity 
an opportunity to reach sustainable, equitable prosperity for all of humanity. An opportunity for the European Union to accelerate its, net, its race to net zero, decarbonize its industry, and build the economy of the future. And an opportunity for Africa to provide security and stability for all Africans while taking its rightful place in the 21st century economy. The Africa Climate Summit culminated in the Nairobi Declaration, which sets out the vision and a pathway for Africa to be a vital part of the global solution to the existential climate change challenge that we all face. The declaration captures the consensus of the African government leaders for climate positive growth. We have the world's biggest untapped renewable energy potential, the youngest and fastest growing workforce and human capital, and relevant natural resources and assets. 60%, for example, of the world's best solar potential is in Africa, as well as 60% of the remaining unused arable land in the world. These assets create an inherent ability for Africa to produce green from the start, cost competitive products and services, and to provide some of the highest quality carbon removal services anywhere in the world. When it comes to green economy, our reality is marked differently from that of Europe. Over 600 million Africans are deprived of access to energy, a fundamental prerequisite for dignified living and the provision of basic yet vital services like health and education. Adding to this is the fact that almost 1 billion Africans lack access to clean cooking. While the global narrative often emphasizes energy transition, for most of Africa, it is about energy growth, energy expansion, and energy access. It follows that how Africa takes on this challenge will matter a great deal both regionally and globally. It will matter whether Africa can transform into a green powerhouse that helps the world decarbonize. Equally important is the focus on providing education and opportunities for youth of Africa. By investing in education and skills development, our young, in our young population, Africa can create a vibrant, self-sustaining economy that offers its youth compelling reasons to build their future at home in Africa. This approach, underpinned by structured migration, can alleviate the pressure on regions like Europe, which increasingly rely on economic migrants to maintain their standards of living. Adopting this agenda is not just a choice, but a necessity. The alternative, which neglects Africa's development and industrialization and, and fails to invest in the young generation, is not, members, a viable option. Allow me to illustrate with a few tangible examples of how our strategies and interests converge. In Kenya, for example, we already have a 92% green grid. Our challenge is not how to get that to 100% because we will. Rather, our challenge is how to grow it. From its current size of just three gigawatts, which is, I'm told, less than 25% of the Paris metropolitan area for a country with five times as many people, we want to grow our grid to 100 gigawatts by 2050 so that it can power green industrialization and create prosperity through green growth. In June this year, this very parliament, in June this year, this very parliament adopted legislation to create the enabling environment for the domestic production of 10 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030 and import and the import of a similar amount in order for, to green EU's industry. African countries are recognized as potential producers of this green hydrogen, and we welcome the collaboration. Kenya, for example, is developing a plant to produce green fertilizer 
which will reduce our import dependency and we have an opportunity to export green hydrogen from our geothermal resources to Europe. Another EU relevant example is bauxite. Africa currently mines 25% of the world's bauxite yet exports almost all of it in raw material. If Africa's renewable energy potential were deployed to smelt currently mined bauxite into aluminium, we could save millions of tons of CO2 equivalent and generate hundreds of thousands of jobs in our continent. And aluminium is just one example of many. Green steel is another. Not to mention Africa's significant global deposits of critical minerals or our potential to produce sustainable fuels. By tapping into these resources and employing green technologies, Africa can contribute significantly to global decarbonization efforts while boosting its own economic development, creating a win-win scenario for both the continent and the world, while Africa, as a source of raw materials, and market for finished products contributed to Euros, uh, Europe's industrialization, there has been tremendous growth in technology and capital. It is, ladies and gentlemen, I request, it is the turn for Europe to deploy their technologies and capital to now unlock the huge green energy resources to drive green industrialization using the natural resource endowments in the continent global green products and services, create jobs, and at the same time, decarbonize Europe and global growth. Big congratulations to the presidents of uh, Kenya and the Kenyan people, like uh, we just heard from the video, President Ruto, they're about to implement the policy that is going to work, help them in the production of a plant that is going to be producing uh, green fertilizers, such that their dependency on import for such products will be highly reduced. So what do you think? I think it's a very fantastic story. In short, the people of Kenya, congratulations. You guys have a very, very intelligent president there. And I love the fact that the, 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 he even went in front of the European Union to tell them this are the beautiful plan with people of Kenya we are trying to implement. And as such, what I love about President Ruto of Kenya is that he was even saying it right in front of the European Union that you know what, I don't want to be dependent on importing all the fertilizers from your country because now Africa, Kenya especially, is going to be independent. I love it the way you were saying it too. And you think it's going to work 100% uh, in the front of your clientele? Definitely. After telling them. You know why, why I love this guy? He's so bold, he's so audacious. And after telling my clientele, uh, it, will make, it will help my clientele to know that, oh, Kenya and the rest of Africa, they're not going to get independence, you know, from uh, depending on the fertilizers from uh, their own side. I think it's a very great idea. And Please, you should keep it up. More it ideas in Africa like okay. that. We need to share it with them. Uh, yes. Share it with them. So months ago, I went into the countryside with my children, and you won't believe that we saw our own Tiwa Tiwa Tiwa. Do you know what it's called? Tiwa Tiwa. Tile Tile Africa Dunga. We saw our own naturally grown apples that I knew when I was growing up. And to my wildest surprise, do you know that my children, they don't even know what it was. They were like, what is this? Mommy, come and see these things. They never knew how our own African apple, Nigerian apple here looks like. Because of what? Mr. Central's clientele, it's their apples that we are eating here. Uh, and the fact is that when they bring those apples here, you can't uh, plant them here. You are just to be depending on them, importing it, buying it. And right now, your people, mm -hmm. you may, I don't know, uh, I am so sorry for those in Kenya, I don't know, I don't mean to be rude. But the fact is, I don't really know, is it, is it right that we have such a brilliant idea like this? And where we should, the first place we should go and go, besides it's in print of, it's in print of Martin Jensho in Boso, is in front of Mr. Cetra's clientele, that they love us so much that they want it to work 100%. You know what, you people of Africa, you are very complex to deal with. I don't understand. And sometimes I really look at my wife like a typical African. Where do you think your ideas should be shared? 
your ideas should be shared in front of the people that, uh, that, that depend on your importation. So that they will know that, oh, they need to reduce the price. Yes, is is a is a is a, is a plan, is a is a way of That's going about. yes, because you got you Africans, you depend on importation of these fertilizers from the European Union, other continents of the world. But now you I don't see any problem with Ruto telling them that this is their plan, this is what they are working on. You know, you are only Look at the economic benefit. You telling them will make them to put their house in order to know that ah oh okay since Kenya is now going to be preparing uh, producing this uh, fertilizer, we need to reduce the price and so that they can continue to consider us when their own fertilizer is now being sold internally. After all, the cost of uh, production of fertilizers within the country minus the cost of transportation from other countries. We, we demand that the European Union should too? reduce their price. You don't understand competition now. What are you saying? Till, 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 till. Maybe, maybe you don't understand. What Rufro was trying to do there is to tell them that prepare because we are going to start producing ah, fertilizer in house. My people. Because even if you do not discuss it with us, we'll still know. <laughs> it, is better, it is better you discuss it with us so that we will start planning more. We should start looking for a new market where we are going to have more people buying our fertilizer. And mind you, there is no way you are going to start your fertilizer production in Africa that you still do not need to, uh, you know, you still do not need to patronize the European Union. Because the whole world we depend on each other, so I don't think there's a problem with that. So please, uh, so please, I want you to comment on this in the comment section. Is it I I I am uh, I don't uh, claim myself to be anything or to it. So uh, is this the right move? That's just what. Ah, uh, because we see some persons they like to defend this. But we are not here to defend or go against anyone. But what we here to we we are here to discuss something sensible something that will work in the Africa. sensible thing is that you go out there tell the people that you have been depending upon that see put your house in order we we are putting our house in order we don't want to start importing uh depending largely on your on your so-called fertilizer there we want to be doing homegrown fertilizer i don't think there is a problem there especially the fact that when it is produced within kenya within africa you know, we will make sure that it is exactly what we want. You are you are the Miru. The fact is, please, I want you to go ahead. It's it's it can never be because your clientele have been known to be the one destabilizing. Are you saying that Ruto should not tell the former business partner what they are about doing? Enemy. You want it to be suddenly. And we call it him a when it is not professor, professor suddenly. And we call it him a teacher. Please, I'm not the one to say this or that. Please comment. Do you think... Roto, uh, Roto, and, sorry, Roto, continue. This is a very good step. Whenever you have a plan, discuss it with the, the people that, you know, that are outside there so that they get to prepare. So that it not, it's not be like a landlord signing them quick notice on the day they are expected to pack. pack. So, so that they can see how to no, destabilize it so that no, it doesn't no, no. work. Everybody, see, let me tell you something about the European Union and the, the West. They are now beginning to see that, ah, it's okay. Okay, Anything. you are going to do this. Okay, ah, and by the time you do it, uh, what will now happen to the ones who have been supplying? Start getting more customers. What, why is she laughing? So that we start getting more customers from other neighboring countries to patronize our fertilizer. I think it's a very good way. You are a very plain man. I like, um, I want to say, Rotorondo. I am Ruto. Please keep it up. The way you are discussing the next plan with the European Union and uh, any listen, I, I believe is a strategic move. It will make them to reduce the price for you. You are going to hear from the comment section if you are right or I am right. So let's go I to know the that you are wrong. You are, you are let's right. go to the next one. Okay. <laughs> it's all about the fact that globally now, 
We want to achieve green economy, global decarbonization effect, and all the likes on global warming. He even said it's no longer global warming, now it's global boiling due to all the worlds in different uh, aspects of the world, and our heart goes to them. And he was right there advising, uh, already it's a statistic that we know that about 25% of the bauxites that are used globally are from Africa, but the painful thing is that they are always exported in their raw form. And Africa is there, we are, we, we are gaining nothing, but that if the EU and every other part, we can just really come and invest here such that this uh, uh, bauxite is actually transformed into aluminium here. They are mined here and processed into aluminium. That there will be lots of work for more of African youths, and they will not be going from one continent to the other, constituting new sands and all this. And I want to believe that. And the people were happy. This, this, this. Is this something that is really working? Because we've been saying this over and over again. As if not be we saying. He, what is bedeviling most of these continents, other continents that are charting that Africans or oh, our youth? So, oh, because Africans, I think about 60% of our population are youth and they are going elsewhere to be disturbing people. It's because they are disturbing our own peace here. They are not allowing us to have full control of all that nature is given to us. And but yet we say it. Oh, yeah. it who is disturbing your peace? That's why I said Africa is a very complicated people to please. See, let me explain to you. William Ruto has just explained the challenges of Africa in front of the European Union, stating the fact that this is the main cause why you have large numbers of our youth flocking into your environment because it is raw material that finishing that you are allowed that is, is being processed here. Why? Because you guys are not investing. What Ruto is doing is only sending Africa to the European Union. Come home, come and invest here. Because as you come to invest here, the, the raw material so let us be using it to produce. It is just a simple uh, laws in economics of what yes. So sorry, I have to interrupt this, your watch on this video to tell you to please subscribe to our channel, like and share our videos, as well as press the notification bell so that we notify of our latest videos. Thank you very much. Localization of industry and industrialization. What do I mean by that? That wherever you have the raw material, site the production closer. So that is what William Uto is trying to say that ah, you people, you better come and invest now before we change our mind. Though, because if we change our mind, we will start producing those aluminium, those bauxite. We we'll start using it for the to, for the production of the finished product, which usually has been what you guys have been doing. You guys have been creating an employment in your side, uh, creating industries with the raw materials you are picking from here. But please. Wizu, Wizu, <laughs> Africa is warning you. Africa is warning you. One, two, two. three. By the time we count zero, we are going to start. We are going to start building plants. <laughs> sure, the plant, the way we we'll do it, we we'll build it very, very close to our raw materials. This is bauxite here. Yeah? This is the next shop. That shop we are going to be producing so many things within. So they are. You telling my clientele, the Europeans, is not a problem. Because it's a but blessing. Shorty, but it's a blessing. Wait, let me learn. It's a blessing because by the time you people will, before you realize it, you know, and you telling them now to make the Europeans to say, ah, oh, let's wait to, for Africans so that they can start producing. You know, we can now start <laughs> buying from Africa. Why is she laughing now? We can now start buying from Africa. In short, it will even be cheaper because it will be cheaper to produce in Africa. Since the raw materials is there in Africa, and they will now ship it to us, and we are not going to be paying more than how much we used to pay for their raw materials. <laughs> so, it's very, very intelligent. Okay, very, very intelligent. Please comment. Is it right? Or oh, I am, I am right. It's very, very intelligent. So your your external influences, your big hands that are controlling the world, that all they want is. 
just for these things, for them to be taking it at no cover. In Nigeria, we spend naira and cover. We don't even have cover again now for information because our currency has been sent to. Uh, and you can say uh, at no sense. At no sense. I am just trying to make them know what's happening in Africa, even in Nigeria. So at no sense. So you feel now they will be so happy to just come and start all their industries here, so that they. So what will happen to their economy there? Are they stupid? <laughs> Are they stupid? These people, they want it to work. It, the, 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 the solution that Africa needs will come from we, the Africans. Yes, there are people here in Africa, they have this, at least to some extent, they have this money, but do they believe in the economy? That was what uh, Professor Patrick Mulumba was saying the other time. Everything we want is what is from there, what is from there, what is from the Western world. Do we believe in ourselves? Please, don't, don't deviate. What is deviation? You guys in Africa, you love to deviate a lot. It's a very simple mathematics. Now, when you guys produce here, it is cheaper. It becomes cheaper. All they just need to do is to ship it from here, finished product from here, because labor is even cheaper in Africa. The European Union you know, will invest. In short, they'll bring all their companies and set it up here in Africa. <laughs> because the labor, cost of labor is cheaper here. Even your currency is so, so like tissue paper. So by the time they bring uh, somebody living in uh, one room abroad, by the time he brings his dollar or this thing, his pounds or whatever currency to this African country, net, he becomes a chief. He can own plants, he can own industries and the likes. And they will, you know, by the time they ship it abroad, they begin to sell it. More so, the youth, the youth abroad, they will still get their. Doing their, their jobs now. They are not no, wait, jobs. what did you just say now? Mm. Let me let me just come to you on that point. Why? Because By the time know. they ship it, no, mm. you, I'm not talking about mm. you. You see where I'm coming to you now. By the time they ship it, do you know what it takes to ship things abroad? I am in the fashion space. I have clients from across the, uh, the world, those that want to ship things. Do you know what it takes to ship things abroad? Do you know how they've made it so difficult that uh, for you to ship things there, that mm -hmm. is why you will go through your nose. That is why you still need each other. Now, if they are coming to set up businesses here in Africa, they will now work on it that, ah, UPS, so, uh, which other people? Um, what are their names now? All these people. EMS. 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 DHL. DXY. We are the one now shipping our road to reduce the price. <laughs> See, the price. I am sure mm -hmm. your clientele. Please, if you've not watched this channel before, uh, this channel, I just have to do this intro. Uh, we are the Cetrus family, and our caption is actually bringing joy from Africa. So whatever we're discussing, don't say, why are these people like this? Uh, we're trying to bring out the truth in whatever we're discussing, but we still bring smiles into it. But <laughs> you see, this thing that you're saying, please, I want you to actually comment in the comments. Do you feel, uh, I know you, what, you, you understand what we're trying to say. So do you feel they will just be happy that all the industrialized, uh, do you feel they will just be happy that they should the industrialization there should move here. Is it not the transfer of obsolete technology that they bring to us? The industrialization from there is not moving anywhere because whether it is there or here, the main thing is that joy, happiness, industrialization anywhere is in such industrialization. So they will lead you guys what? to develop your industrialization mechanism. Based on the fact that you have even told them ahead, ah, they say good, you should carry on. So even if you think that their industry there will close, it will not close. It's not only Africa that is their customer. They have customers in other planets, sorry, I want to say planets, <laughs> in other continents of the world. So you people should not just be thinking uh, Africa, Africa, most of see these natural resources, it, it has been there with you people. What have you done with it? So now that ah. you are starting to develop your mindset that you want to now use it, well, my clientele they will leave you to use it. Hey. They will allow you. Ah, ah. So far that you people, eh, do, not allow, so far that you people do not allow war or uh, crisis around where these resources are, so that you can be able to use it. <laughs> Mr. Sato, they will leave us. Mm. Ah, I see various. Uh, I, I don't understand. We see here various. <laughs> My various what? 
Yes, now no. your various no. like the care care will not be coming to that's different why, parts. That's why the whole of Europe stood up for him. Clapping that oh good, fantastic, yeah. this is a very brilliant president. Wow. Telling us what they are about to do, what they are already doing, and what they will still do. Hmm. So, so and, that and, you know, they, it's, they, it's can, very... they can now see that Africa is the senior brother of China to come. So they will allow you guys do everything easily so that it can produce results. That is what European Union is after. They yeah. want Africa to well, develop so that you will not be disturbing them. Oh. The, the number of you that are flocking into Europe, flocking into... And look at it. Don't let me say that. Don't let anybody know I told you. Europe is even a very poor continent. I hope you know. Uh, it's when you are talking about uh, sorry, America that you cannot begin to say, okay, they are even doing well. They are for Europe. They are like... Uh, the whole of Europe, it's about 450 million persons out of their 27. So Nigeria is like one and a half of them. Yes, yes, okay. of also. So we are as in, in, and these people are coming here, this is your client, and they don't want us to read. In fact, oh my God, it will be very good if they can leave us alone. Do you think they are no intelligent? They are going to here? leave you. They are already yeah. leaving you. Uh, they want you people to develop, but they are just saying that you people should not fight you. Those that should not Who be. Who are those instigating the fight? Nobody is instigating the fight, please. Africans, you you speculate a whole lot. You you are your your mindset is so dirty. Okay. Ah! Bad. Ah! Mm. On a global platform. Yes, that is why, why, why you why are you always castigating Europe? People are trying, they are even clapping for you that oh, these are the beautiful plans. They want you guys to develop. So as they wanted you guys to develop, please do what you want to do quickly. So next, I, I I don't want to go to the next. I want people to talk. I'm tired of because I see that it's like this. Your client that they've so paid you and you know if you know how much they pay me. <laughs> but what are you saying? Oh, they dare me. Oh, they dare me. That's you right. Understand? They even make sure I'm trained. <laughs> I'm a trained economist. <laughs> and I now mix my own economics with statistics. <laughs> so yeah, I can give you data, quality data that will change your working steps. <laughs> so fire on. Next. Oh, my God. President Ruto and other African leaders, I think if I should go on, the list is endless. If I should start, uh, Reiterating all that I said, when I looked, I, I listened over and over to this his speech. His speech is an intelligent, very intelligent, well crafted, well delivered, well -crafted. Are, and delivered at the right place. Yes, delivered at the wrong place. Delivered at the right place. Please comment. Delivered at the right place. That's why you people in Africa they don't know that you are intelligent. See, the best way to show that you are very intelligent is when you stand in front of the rest of the world and tell them about your plan, what you have been doing, what you are about doing, and what you intend to do. So that they can know that, ah, this one is very intelligent too. Let us just hold our hand. It is not, it is not the top now talk that matters, but it's the top now do God. Do you understand? Do you let me see? That's Nigeria. God, now, this is Roto that's is Nigerian. Uh, Roto is PG human being. It is not just to be top now talk. Talky, talky, talky. It's not to be that the same. Part, that is a part of this country that when they give birth to a child, they see that that child has a potential of talking and is a promissory child. You know what they call the child? I go. I go means I will. So when when you see somebody like like Roto always saying I will, I will. He's a very passionate African no, no, no. president. I think the best thing, the mm -hmm. best is. Before you do that thing, achieve it first. You see the... Uh, Before you do that thing, achieve it first. I don't understand. You're confusing my confusion. Before you start uh, adding your plans to the world, make sure you've started implementing it and you've achieved the level of success. Make sure you've started executing it. Rudo has achieved the whole lot. Kenyan people, please comment below. I know that you know a lot that Ruto has been doing. Ruto has been a very talking, expressive and... Um, I go, I'm sorry, about to do 
if even if he has not done some, he has been doing some. Please comment below. Let the whole world know that you have a good president. They're very bold, very industrious. And but as regards to these plants that will be producing green fertilizers, as in journeys, is about to I go. Okay, so uh, the best now that we need in Africa, we've had a lot of I go, I go, especially no, from, oh, please. implementing needs. Please, please, so, please, I'm not talking just process. about him now, okay. about all these African rulers that we have, especially in their manifestos during its, uh, uh, elections. I will do this, I will do this. But when they come into power, they say this uh, party did it. It is the I go, I go, I go. Now you don't bring us here. That's what has brought us here. Now make they speak in. PG making at a year, so now he don't brought us here. Yes, our, our followers might not understand. Uh, yes, I'm going to interpret this. Let me, let me save them from the trouble. Let me save them from the trouble. See, African president, intending, current intending and future president of Africa, whatever plans you have for the continent of Africa, please, the first place to share it, please don't, don't, don't miss this. The first place to share it is right in front of the West. I'm telling you, because it will make them know that you are very intelligent and you are fit for that position so that they can learn from you. The first place to share it is in the place of execution. Let's implement, let's execute, let's have this green, uh, let's have this plant produce the green fertilizers and let's have some here in, Af in Nigeria. So let there be easy trade between the African countries. Let our borders be open. Let us have free movement of goods and services. Let it work first before we start telling them. Then we can tell them of the success story. Before they can know how to scatter it, they See, will know how to move ahead. Please, that let is Let me tell it. you something. Please, come If you follow an idea, you'll be, you be termed as a traitor. You'll be like somebody that is planning something strange behind. Because there is no problem in sharing. Problem shared is problem I've solved. My own conclusion is that whatever plans we have and whatever projects we want to implement, please let's start the implementation. Let's start the execution. He told us that the greatest, uh, uh, the best of world's uh, solar potentials are in Africa. We know that 60% uh, this one, 60% arable lands are in Africa. We know that. Let's start to put them to good use. And I know he was emphasizing all that the EU has to do with Africa, there should be mutual benefits. Yes, he was actually hammering on that point. But my question as I conclude is, the people on the other end, are they really sure that they want us to have a mutual relationship? So, that is what we should know about. Do they want it to really be the mutually beneficial relationship right now or is the master and slave relationship which is what we are tired of in Africa so please I would like you to air your own view in the comment section Mr. Sergio the funny song is that what is the this is like bringing master and servant relationship let me tell you whether you like it or not what Ruto is doing here in my own opinion is a very good one he's selling Africa to the European Union that see come and invest because whether you invest this is the right time to invest in Africa whether you invest or not somebody else is going to invest so it is better that you partake in the glory that is about coming by coming to invest in Kenya coming to invest in Africa coming to invest in Africa to benefit from the benefits that will be benefited by Africans and investors in Africa so I am begging on you, all African leaders, whenever you have a beautiful plan like this, the first place to share it is, uh, you know, outside there. Sure, don't even share it with your people. Don't even, you might not even need to plan too much within. Just go straight outside there. Why? Because you are going to be able to attract foreign investment into the economy. You understand? And by so doing, more money to initiate and complete that project to execute that project we come in so please keep it up Ruto. Eh? keep it up always discuss your ideas with thank you very Africa. much you are going to know the right person just uh, this this is actually a debate today because mm -hmm. uh, so want to know the person that is right just 
Let's say you in the comment section, and if you are in uh, Kenya, and please let me quickly add this to it. As an economist, I'm a keen economist. I don't know whether my wife really studied economics or she was passing beside a class of people <laughs> studying economics. That is what we call autarky. Autarky is a process or is a system, is an economic system in which they are enclosed, enshrouded with a mindset that everything that needs to be produced, business transaction is within themselves. No country, no economy in the world thrives. Practicing autarky because you must you must depend on one nation or the other. You must benefit. You must transact businesses with one nation or the other. For example, your money is just a bunch of tissue paper if you do not transact with other countries of the world. So please, mind you, Ruto is doing the right thing. He's selling Africa. To the world. He's selling Africa to the world. Please don't let's go over this thing again. But let the thing is selling start working before you sell. You don't need At it to work before you, you must start be selling. John just, you need to sell it so that I can get money to make it work. You must be John Ketting. Okay, please comment below. You I must rest, really be John Ketting. So that's just it today. This is from the situation. So I'm like, I think we have to end it there because if we should continue this with Mr. Zetra, he's really getting ah. he's getting me. I'm getting an annoying. <laughs> The, the way you are, you are, you are yeah, supporting this your clientele. Okay, so that is just it. So, uh, we all seek the development of Africa, and we believe we are the ones. We've not followed the Chapa syndrome because we believe that all those that Chapa, they will Chapa that. Will chapa because that. we are not going to die in this Africa. If you have been somewhere in Nigeria, which is one of the hardest places to live in Africa, and we are surviving, believing that all that we're doing is still going to work out one day. It's definitely going to work out. So that's why it's not from the, the, uh, the standpoint of cynicism that we're talking, but we're talking from the standpoint that we want to see this to actually work. That's why we're smiling with it, um, because we bring smiles from Africa. We are the Citrus family. So don't forget to keep your joy, because your joy is actually your strength, and your strength is your life. And that joy comes from the Holy Spirit and from within. And we're going to be sharing this joy. Uh, we've been announcing this right now. We just have some days to go. Ninth with people on the streets of Africa on the 9th of December. On the 9th of December, we shall be taking this joy down to the street because a lot of people, especially here in Nigeria, are based. A lot of people are hungry. They are having a very tough bite as a result of what increasing price and their salary still remains the same. So we as we have a foundation and we are going out to feed the less privileged people. And if you are there, if you are within Lagos, please we want you to join us to uh, share. We want to uh, feed people so we need more hands to support us in sharing foods to the less privileged. And aside that, if you want to support us with one dollar, one dollar can feed one person. And if you want to support us with one dollar, two dollar, how many dollars, please find feel free to access the payment details uh, below or above to join us so that we can touch lights. I want to say thank you to all that have been helping us before this time with our Christmas chicken distribution in our foundation and we operate a foundation that picks the less privileged youths, trains them on different crafts, and we empower them to the world. Once say thank you to all that have been helping us. Oh, so we believe we're going to all distribute this joy together. So till we come your way next time, we remain the centrist. Make sure you keep your joy and you keep your strength. Catch you. Love you. And always remember the fact that always share your plan with your adversary. It will help you a lot to achieve your plan very fast. So with that being said, if you have your beautiful wife beside you, just order so much and let them know that that is what we call Eclipse of the People. But if you are not married, you look for the nearest transformer and hold tightly. And come back to tell us the result. So from all of us here, we want to say bye-bye. Oh,